My name is Rachel, and I'm a homemaker that is 33 years old. I've been married to my spouse, Adam, for four years, but we haven't yet had a kid. We are receiving infertility therapy at the moment, but we are not getting pregnant. One day, I noticed a small girl, a total stranger, squatting in front of my house as I was making my way home from the grocery store. I yelled out to her, wondering why she was out on this chilly midwinter day without a coat. I responded with, Hello, are you waiting for someone? In response, the girl said, My name is Selena. Okay, Selena, where's Moni? I inquired. The girl said, She went somewhere, in response. Are you disoriented? What's the name of Mommy? Mary, she said. I became motionless. Mary? Do you mean me? With a nod, Selena gave me a piece of paper. With shaking hands, I opened the letter. It said, Look after this child for a little while. No way, I said. Are you Mary's daughter? This letter's sender, Mary, seems to be my elder sister. At the age of 20, Mary ran away from home and never came back. Seventeen years have passed. She used to cause us a lot of grief as a teenager by running away from home on several occasions and getting into difficulties with guys. Although my parents and I were always concerned about her, we were unaware that she was a mother. What time did your mom say she would pick you up? I questioned Selena. I'm not sure. Mommy never comes home till the morning, and she always plays with guys I don't know. It stunned me. Okay, then where's your father? I am not a father. You are mommy's sister. Therefore, she advised me to spend some time at this place. I see. I grabbed her hand and we went inside for the night. I worried how long she had been outside because she was shaking so much and seemed terribly chilly. Although Mary has always been a self-centered sister who lacks empathy, I never imagined that she would harm her own child in this way. I was unable to conceive the kid I desired. Anger at Mary shot through me. I ignored those emotions and covered Selena with a warm blanket as I turned on the stove. Selena, are you hungry? I inquired. I need to eat. It was yesterday when I last had any food. You haven't had any food. I will immediately get you some food. I immediately gave Selena some of the warm pumpkin soup I had cooked yesterday. She drank a lot of the pumpkin soup, which she had never had before. She looked to be enjoying it a lot. Yum, this is really tasty. Are you serious? I'm overjoyed. Enjoy as much as you desire. Selena continued telling me how good it was, and her look made me sad. She seemed to be trying to cheer me up. I didn't want to ask too many questions just yet, but I wondered what type of life she had been leading. I chose to feed her more delectable food till she was satisfied for the time being. I gave her rice, fried chicken, and an omelet. She declared them to be nice and delectable after eating them all. I suggested we take a bath after she was full. Her hair appeared oily, as if she hadn't had a shower in many days. Selena, how about a bath? I inquired. For a little period, her face stiffened up. You don't like taking a bath. I made a gentle inquiry. She said, Uh, no, I don't mind. Are you certain? I'll get you some jammies to wear after that. I ran to the bedroom to get her some smaller clothing. However, Selena had left the living room when I came back. I went to look in the kitchen when I heard the water running. She was using the chilly kitchen sink to wash her hair. What are you doing? How chilly is that water? You're going to become sick. I apologize, she said. You don't have to apologize. I brought her to the restroom after covering her with a blanket. She was astonished and wide-eyed. She gasped. Wow, it looks exactly like the house I saw on TV. It came to light that Selena didn't have a restroom in her home. Thinking warm water would be a waste of petrol money, Mary had forced her to wash herself with cold tap water from the kitchen. I wiped away my tears and lowered Selena gently into the warm bathtub. I'm amazed at how warm it is, Selena said. Are baths always this warm? Yes, I said with a smile. From now on you can take a bath every day. Are you serious? 
I'm overjoyed, she retorted. I assisted her in cleaning up. She had tangled hair, but when I gave her some TLC, she looked like a sweet little girl again. We cuddled up on the living room couch after I put on my loungewear. Just then, Adam came home. I'm home. Welcome back, I greeted him. When Selena saw Adam, she shrank back, frightened. It's fine, I assured her. This is my husband, Adam. He's a kind man, so you don't need to be afraid of him. After explaining the situation to Adam, he was outraged. What the hell? That's unforgivable. Can we keep her with us for a while? Of course, I replied. How could she do that to such a small child? Selena curled up on the couch while we talked, and I introduced her to Adam. Selena, this is Uncle Adam. Good evening, Selena said shyly. The three of us settled into living together. As time went on, Selena gradually became more talkative and even smiled more. We reported her situation to my parents, and they immediately came to meet her. Hello, Selena, my parents said. We are your grandfather and grandmother. Selena was puzzled but seemed happy. It was as if she didn't know she had grandparents. After that, I went to City Hall to check Mary's family register. To my shock, I discovered that Selena's birth had never been registered. She was a non-existent child, one who never received an enrollment notice for school. I consulted with several agencies, and after various discussions and support, Selena's family register was finally created. Selena, you can go to elementary school now, I told her. I'm so happy, she replied. It had already been over a month since Selena came to live with us, but she still hadn't opened up much. She remained skittish whenever Adam or I moved and apologized excessively for any small mistakes. Mary must have done something terrible to her. One day, Selena blurted out, I wonder when Mommy will come for me. Hearing those words made me sad. Despite everything, she still wanted her mom. Every day since Selena arrived has been a joyful time for Adam and me. We wanted children so badly, and we treated Selena as our own daughter. We hoped she would stay with us for a long time. The day after she received her school enrollment invitation, we decided to take her shopping for school supplies and new clothes. Selena, let's go shopping today for new clothes and stuff. I can get new clothes. I've already got some clothes. It's okay, but this isn't enough. If you go to elementary school, you'll need more comfortable clothes. Then I'll accompany you as the luggage carrier. Selena, Adam, and I went to the shopping mall and got her everything she needed for school. I was having so much fun preparing for the school entrance that I ended up buying a lot of clothes, stationery, etc. The three of us were laughing and saying that we had bought too many things as we headed home. Then, to my surprise, I saw Mary standing in front of our house. Mary. Mom. Sis. Oh, welcome home. It's not welcome home. What the hell were you thinking? How dare you come here? Hey, hey, hey. Calm down. Don't yell at me. It's just pathetic. Who do you think you're blaming for all of this? First, you need to apologize to Selena. Oh. Selena looked at Mary, but Mary only took one look at Selena and didn't even make eye contact with her. What are you trying to do? Well, we can't just stand here talking, so let me in the house. I'll do it even if you don't tell me. Let's go, Selena. Anyway, I decided to let Mary in and ask her what was going on. Is this guy your husband? He's a nice guy. Nice to meet you. I'm Adam. I don't know how to say this at our first meeting, but you are an unfit parent to treat your child like that. You are so cocky, my brother-in-law. You're a stranger. You can't talk to me like that. I don't care about that. You didn't even feed her well, did you? How could you do such a thing to your own child? Single mothers have a hard time. I raised her well. You have no right to complain. You said you raised her well, you just neglected her. Mary was deeply annoyed at being blamed by Adam and me. Her inability to recognize what she had done left me scratching my head and wondering what the hell we were all thinking. 
I asked Selena how she felt about seeing Mary, and she seemed to be unable to look at Mary directly. Like before, she shrunk and shivered. I originally assumed that she missed her mother, but I sensed that perhaps this was not the case. While I was thinking about it, Mary opened her mouth. You guys don't have kids, do you? No, but so what? I'm going to give you this child. What? I've raised her through the toughest baby years of her life. You'll be lucky to have an older kid. Now, do you even know what you're talking about? I know what I'm saying. I'm saying that I'm going to give you poor, childless people a little kid. You're disgusting. Unbelievable. Oh, so you don't want her. I'm not going to give her back to you, even if you ask me. I made a family register, and she is going to elementary school next month. I will make her happier than she was when she was with you. Oh, you made a family register. Of course I did. Why didn't you file a birth certificate? Because if I did, they would know I have a child, right? I didn't want to mess with the family register for such a selfish reason. She was not allowed to go to kindergarten or elementary school because of that. There's nothing wrong with not going to school. It's just called active truancy. It's not worth talking to you. Apparently, Mary had broken up with Selena's father before she gave birth to Selena without registering with him. Mary left Selena alone so many times in order to date guys, pretending to be unmarried and childless so that she could marry a new man and raise her kid. I said, so many times, we'll take Selena. Don't come see us again. Then 10 million. I'm giving you a person, so 10 million is a small price to pay, right? What are you talking about? You're going to sell your daughter for money. Of course I'm going to sell her for money. I'm not going to pay you. Selena is a human being. When I refused, Mary said she would take Selena home with her. Then I'll take Selena with me, lock her up in the house again, and have her wash her body with cold tap water. I won't let you do that. Okay, 10 million. Okay, well, I can't get it for you today, so you'll have to come back later to pick it up, and I'll keep her here until then. Well, that's okay. I don't want to be bothered with her anyway. I had no intention of paying, but I lied quickly to keep Selena from being taken away. Mary might come back to take Selena again. From that day on, Adam and I thought about what we could do, and before taking action, we decided to check Selena's feelings. Selena, do you want to go back to your mommy? I don't want to go back. Mom scares me. She always bumps into me and says all kinds of mean things. I don't want to go back. I see. The other day you said you wondered when your mother would come for you. So that's because I thought that if mommy came, I'd have to go back to that house and I wanted to stay here forever. I understand. Then I'll do my best for you to live with us from now on. Having confirmed Selena's feelings, we decided to first investigate Mary's background with an investigative firm that Adam knew. It was then we found out that Mary was now engaged to an elite lawyer. We came up with a plan and began working behind the scenes to keep Mary from finding out. A week later, when everything was ready, we lied to Mary and told her that we had the money and were ready to meet. On the day of the meeting, I invited Mary to my house. I asked my parents to come and take care of Selena during the meeting. She asked me, do you have the money ready? I won't give you Selena and I won't pay you either. What? I came all the way here because you said you had the money ready. Now give me the money. Do you have any idea how heartbroken Selena is? And then you end up selling her for money. Unbelievable. How I raise my kid is none of your business. Children grow up even if they are left alone. You just don't understand because you don't have kids. You didn't tell your boyfriend that you had a child, did you? Of course not. He's an elite lawyer, and we're getting married next year, so we can live happily ever after. Don't bother us. What would he think if he knew what you just said? What then? Mary's boyfriend, the elite lawyer, opened the door and walked in. He said, don't tell me what you just said is true. Did you lie to me? What's going on? Why are you here? You said you were unmarried and childless. I've never been married. I just happened to have a child by mistake. 
By mistake. What a horrible woman. Unbelievable. Don't say that. I was almost married to you without realizing you were my cheater. Naturally, I'm calling it quits on the engagement. I'll have to give you alimony since you betrayed me. Alimony? Shattered relationship. Hold on. Don't leave me, please. Stop talking. A mother who abuses her child that way is not someone I can marry. I'm not even interested in seeing your face. Rachel, why are you? This is where you brought him. Why did you treat me in this way? Because I knew there was no way I could do it the traditional way. I'm going to discuss Selena's case with a lawyer right now. I came here today despite my initial skepticism after hearing what you stated in person. I had no clue she was such a scoundrel. I will now fully represent Rachel and her family going forward. You'll be sorry to turn a lawyer become an adversary. Oh no, please pardon me. A policeman showed up at our house shortly after. In truth, I had requested that the person in charge of the child's safety look into the case of the child's abandonment. When Mary visited our house the last time, I also told them that she would be coming today because they had covertly taped our chat the previous time. Mary was arrested for child abandonment while in protective care and brought away by the police. She was going to spend some time behind jail. After then, it was quite challenging and took a long time, but Selena was eventually permitted to move in with us after a number of procedures. As he stated, the attorney wanted payment from Mary for calling off the engagement. Mary was completely defeated and had no hope. Selena and Mary's boyfriend parted ways when Mary was released from prison. She started to lose her attractiveness and eventually ceased drawing attention from guys since she had to work so hard to pay the alimony. She burst into our house the other day, weeping, asking to get Selena back. She is my little one. Return her to you. What topic are you discussing? She is now ours. I refuse to return her to you. You are no longer her protector. No, not your mother. Mommy and Daddy are uncle and auntie. Here I am. No, why? I'm your mother. All right, Mary had also been turned down by Selena and had left in a stupor, appearing to be in despair. For the rest of her life, I won't allow her to get Selena back. Mary should spend a solitary and lonely life, reflecting on what she did to Selena. Meanwhile, Adam and I have finished our grueling infertility treatment, and the three of us are laughing a lot as we spend our days together. We have had a great time together, and I want to spend the rest of my life showing Selena all the love I have. 